Hi guys, so yeah, a few months ago I picked up this bad boy, which is uh, weighs a ton. It's a 486 laptop. Now, 486, if you didn't know, is uh, an Intel processor. So Intel used to use a numbering system instead of words. So they did 286386, then the 486, then they switched to using uh, words. So the successor to the 486 was the Pentium 1 processor. Now, I bought this uh, laptop primarily for DOS gaming. So I have a lot of DOS games on disk that I wanted to play on an authentic original system. Now, the DOS games used to come in these gorgeous big boxes. So here we've got LucasArts TIE Fighter. Now, I uh, used to love going down the shops with my pocket money and into the software shop and seeing all the big boxes, gorgeous artwork, and just picking out a game and coming home with something that's just a bit more magical than coming home with just a DVD case with not necessarily any documentation these days. Whereas these were like gorgeous just boxes, lots of documentation and what have you. Uh, yet this one particular game comes on five discs, so they used to come on these little floppy discs uh, which hold about just over three meg of data, so you'd need well over 300 of these to get up to a gigabyte, which is insane to think about. And yeah, like I said, comes with some nice documentation, used to get lovely like full color manuals, you used to get books in some of them, it was insane. So yeah, Got this laptop, it's been sat at work just fiddling with it for a bit and it's come home now and it got me thinking like what are some of my favourite DOS games from back in the day and what are some of my favourite DOS games that I think are actually still worth playing today. So here's a list of 15 DOS games that I'd thoroughly recommend playing and there'll be links in the description to find resources where you can play all of these games if you want to. Now, one quick disclaimer, when I was recording the audio for the voiceover, um, I was experimenting with some new mic settings, so the plosives are a little bit harsh in places, particularly the P's. So apologies for that, but what can you do? So yeah, without further ado, guys, here is my top 15 DOS games that are still worth playing today. So first DOS game on the list is Degeneration. Now, this is a 1991 release, developed by Robert Cook and James Brown and published by Mindscape. Now this is an isometric kind of action adventure game with puzzle solving elements. So you're in a building with various floors and you have to make your way through said building and solve various puzzles. So there are various doors that you have to unlock with keys and solving various puzzles. There are also traps like grenade launchers and I think like electric floors and what have you that you have to get round. You have a laser pistol and the shots from the laser actually bounce off the walls. So this is kind of incorporated into the puzzle solving because you can bounce and ricoch ricochet your, uh, your laser shots off the walls and then use that to flick switches and open doors and turn on and off machines and what have you and yeah there are enemies which I believe are like um, sort of bio bio weapons it's like a bio weapons facility so you have to defeat these enemies as well as solving various puzzles but yeah really really good fun game it actually still looks really really good I think uh, because it's not proper 3D it's just isometric kind of graphics it still looks quite good, it's aged very well, and it's still really, really fun. I think games that have puzzle-solving elements do age well because, obviously, they're timeless. So, yeah, definitely worth checking out. That's D-Generation. Next up is 1995's Dark Forces, which was developed and published by LucasArts. Now, this is an awesome Star Wars game, definitely worth checking out. And it's a first person shooter. Now it's in the sort of same era as Doom. It came a couple of years after Doom. So at the height of the first person shooter craze where a lot of Doom clones were coming out. And this is probably one of the best. It's got a really great storyline. You play a guy called Kyle Katarn and you are basically striving to foil the Empire's plot. Uh, which is a project called the, I think it's called the Dark Trooper Project. But yeah, I mean, you traverse various Star Wars um, themed levels and various well-known Star Wars enemies you're up against. And it's great, it's got some awesome audio and music and some brilliant cutscenes. And yeah, it's just great fighting stormtroopers in, in that kind of first person scenario. Really, really good fun. My third pick and one of my absolute favourites on the list is 1993 release 
by uh, Bullfrog and published by EA called Syndicate. Now this game is one of my favourites from back in the day but it's also one of the most enjoyable to play now. It's still an absolute blast. I love it. Now Syndicate is a kind of isometric-ish game where you control these androids or cyborgs of basically augmented humans and they do your bidding and the scenario is it's a very bleak future there's corporations waging war against each other and each corporation has these cyborgs doing their bidding so you control a team of up to four cyborgs at a time and each mission will be different so you may be uh, tasked with an assassination or a kidnapping or getting some tech or persuading people and there's this brilliant weapon in the game called the Persuadatron and the Persuadatron just persuades people to do what you want them to do so they'll be persuaded to come and work for your corporation and of course you encounter the enemy syndicate cyborgs so it can get a bit hairy at times when you run into a huge number of uh, enemy corporations but yeah it's really good fun it can be very very challenging so it takes several attempts to do some of the missions and uh, yeah they do get very very hard later on and you've got like a global map so you take over territories at a time which are countries and then you slowly take over the world your corporation basically but yeah um, you've got a great array of weapons you can upgrade your cyborgs sort of augmented parts so each part like the legs uh, if you upgrade the legs they can walk faster and you know arms make them stronger and all sorts and upgrade the armor and what have you and also you can put research money into tech so you can research new weapons and uh, you get a better arsenal if you do that so yeah if you only check out one game on this list I thoroughly recommend it be Syndicate Right, so I kind of cheated for my next pick because I'm putting two games in and that is Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2. Now, Monkey Island was released in 1990 with Monkey Island 2 the following year and they are both developed and published again by LucasArts. Now, Monkey Island 1 and 2 are among my favourite games of all time which you know very well if you watch the channel regularly and they are among the best point and click adventure games ever made now if you like point and click adventure games and you haven't played these that's insane just go and play them now you will absolutely love them if you don't like point and click adventures they're still worth checking out because the humor in these games is absolutely unmatched in video games it is genuinely really funny dry humor it's got a great story so you are playing as Guybrush Threepwood who is an aspiring pirate and you end up on an island and you start doing tasks for these pirate uh, kind of pirate leaders on the island and you do the tasks in order to become an official pirate now you get into all sorts of scrapes and what have you and you meet your arch enemy who is the the, uh, the pirate LeChuck and uh, yeah you kind of get into this love story with the governor on the island and all sorts of stuff ends up going on and, and yeah the puzzles can be quite tricky but you'll get there in the end there's nothing that's completely insolvable due, due to being really really difficult but yeah challenging enough and like I said absolutely unmatched humor it's absolutely fantastic so if you're going to check out one of these games I'd say I prefer the second game but I would advise you to go and check out the first game first the graphics are far more primitive in the first game but it is still an absolutely fantastic game and definitely worth checking out and hopefully you'll like it so much that then you will progress into playing the second game as well so if you've never heard of any of the games on this list bar one I'm sure it's this one now everybody's heard of Doom Doom was released in 1993 and it was developed by id software and published by GT interactive now Doom is heralded as the father of first-person shooters now basically first-person shooters weren't called first-person shooters until a while after Doom and shortly after Doom there was a, a sort of influx of, of copycats and they were just called Doom clones and then the genre changed to be being called uh, first-person shooters now Doom is absolutely fantastic fun definitely go and check it out it's primitive by today's standards obviously but the, you know it's right back where we started with the genre and it's premises you are in hell and you're just fighting demons basically it's very very simple brilliant weapons brilliant sound effects and music 
and uh, yeah you just traverse the levels and you've got to find keys to get through doors and you just got to shoot up enemies it's very very simple premise but very very good fun Next is Command and Conquer, which is a 1995 release. Now, this was developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin, and it's a real-time strategy. Now, we're going right, right, right back to when real-time strategy games were very primitive and in their infancy. Now, Command and Conquer is a franchise that's still going today, so you may have played one of the more recent ones if you haven't played this, but I thoroughly recommend going right back and playing this one. And it's a basic uh, real-time strategy where you're managing resources and you're building and then you're fighting your enemies. Um, but yeah, really, really classic game. Really great fun. I spent hours and hours and hours on this back in the day. And it had some brilliant cutscenes which might look a bit cheesy now. But back in the day, the cutscenes really were very, very impressive. I remember uh, the sequel, Red Alert, having particularly good cutscenes with uh, you know actual actors in and to have actors hired in cutscenes in a video game back in the mid 90s was actually quite a big deal but yeah really great fun game love the strategy kind of RTS uh, genre back in the 90s and this is probably one of the best examples Next up is TIE Fighter, which is a 1994 game, again by LucasArts. Now, there are a lot of LucasArts games on this list, but it just goes to show that they were one of the best developers for the PC back in the 90s. Now, TIE Fighter is in the X-Wing series, so uh, the first game was X-Wing, and TIE Fighter is the second game. And there is also X-Wing vs TIE Fighter, which came up afterwards. But TIE Fighter is the best one in the series for me, and it's really, really great fun. And the reason it's the best, I think, is because you actually get to play the bad guy. So you're actually fighting for the Empire rather than the Rebels and you're piloting various TIE Fighters. Now, the game is like a space simulator, so kind of like the Wing Commander series. And you get various missions, uh, really, really good cutscenes. And um, yeah, you get various missions where you'll have to do an escort or assault on a rebel fleet or whatever it is. And you're just piloting uh, various different TIE fighters. So like, you know, just TIE, TIE Advance, TIE Bomber, whatever it may be. And yeah, just fighting in space and it's just absolutely awesome. Now the graphics do look a bit dated now, but it doesn't really detract from the gameplay. Gameplay is still really, really good fun and uh, it takes a bit of strategic thinking sometimes. There's quite a lot going on, so you do have to learn a fair few keyboard controls to actually uh, control the ship and pilot the ship and various different uh, controls. But yeah, brilliant, brilliant game. Definitely go and check this one out. Next up's Cannon Fodder. Now this was released in 1993, developed by Sensible Software and published by Virgin. And it is a kind of how to describe it, it's a point and click game. So you're controlling a little team of soldiers and you just have to make your way through the level. Basically you have to kill all the enemies and there's also hostage, hostages to be rescued and what have you. And yeah, it's just very, very simple. You just point the cursor at the enemies you want to you want to kill. And uh, you click one mouse button to shoot and the other mouse button to throw grenades. And yeah, it sounds simple but it can be bloody tricky. But yeah, brilliant fun, gorgeous sort of top-down 2D graphics, brilliant, brilliant fun, uh, very much in the sort of sensible software style, uh, similar graphics to other games they released at the time, like Sensible Soccer, but yeah, it's just really, really aged well, and it's really, really good fun, definitely a challenge, definitely check out Cannon Fodder. Right, so this one's called Drug Lord. I can't really find much info on the developer, uh, but I think it was created by a guy called John E. Dell. Now, this is a funny one because I've never actually played it as Drug Lord. I played it as Dope Wars, and I think it's got various names, but yeah, Dope Wars is kind of a more updated version of it. And hopefully, if I can find it, there'll be a link that you can play Dope Wars in your browser in the description. So uh, yeah, I think this game is going to be the most accessible game on the list to most people. Because you can just jump on your browser and play this game. And it's very, very simple. It's by far the most simple of the games on this list. Now, uh, Drug Lord or Dope Wars or wh whatever you want to call it, is basically a drug selling simulator. So you're a drug dealer and you start off with X amount of cash 
and you have to start buying and selling drugs and you have 30 days in which to make as much money as you can there are no objectives other than to just try and beat your last high score and that makes for a surprisingly addictive game this game uh, appropriately enough is like crack um, you can't stop playing it I absolutely fucking played this to death when I was in my teens and uh, yeah basically you've got 30 days to make as much money as you can each turn is a day so you take a turn by traveling between various places so I think it's set in New York so you're traveling between like Manhattan and Staten Island and Coney Island and every time you travel to one of these places a day passes and basically the the, the hope is that you'll buy your drugs cheap in one place and you'll sell them at a higher price in another place and there's all sorts of different drugs to buy so hash, cocaine, heroin, uh, weed, all sorts and yeah various things happen in the game like sometimes the like you know the Marrakesh Express will arrive which means the price of hash will drop or you can also get into scrapes like you'll get chased by the police or you'll get this that and the other happen and you have to kind of work your way around that as well and I believe you can buy various things if you get the chance like you can buy a bigger bag so you can carry more I believe you can only carry like a hundred units of any mixture of drugs at one time unless you get the upgraded bag and you can I, I think buy a gun as well it's been a while since I played it but now actually uh, uh, making this video I, I'm gonna jump on the browser straight after this and, and give it a whirl but yeah it's so much fun just really really simple sort of buying and selling trading game I guess but yeah it's super addictive definitely pop down to the description and look for the link to play it in your browser right number 10 on the list is an arcade port now this was developed by Atari and published by Domark and it is 1991's Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters now as a kid this had an instantly attractive kind of name for me so as soon as I saw the box I was like wow looks really interesting it's got really cool like cartoony like pop art almost style cover so it instantly drew me in but yeah really really good fun it had brilliant music and it's an isometric game where you're basically running around and you're shooting uh, loads and loads of robots and you're trying to save the uh, the lady and you know classic kind of premise but yeah really really good fun it's isometric with various different levels and you've got escalators and what have you going up to different levels and just running around and shooting robots so uh, not much to it but yeah absolute blast this game really really love it next we have the lost vikings which came out in 1992 now this was published by interplay but it was developed by silicon and synapse who have since become blizzard now this game is really really cool little sort of puzzle game now it's like a platformer but you control three vikings and each viking has a different skill so one can sort of charge and bash and one has a shield that he can sort of hold up to block enemy attacks or he can hold it up in the air so that his two buddies can jump on the uh, shield and kind of get to higher places but yeah each uh, each Viking has a different skill essentially and you use those three skills to control them one at a time to traverse a level so you switch between whichever Viking you're controlling and then you have to get them all to the end of the level so really really simple just get the three Vikings to the end of the level but uh, as with any puzzle game obviously it isn't in reality as simple as that and it makes for a really great puzzle game it looks fantastic and yeah like I said earlier puzzle games tend to have that kind of timeless quality and that makes the Lost Vikings just as fun today as it was in 1992 right now for the last LucasArts game on this list and another point and click adventure game and this is Day of the Tentacle now this is the sequel to Maniac Mansion but it's very very different to Maniac Mansion it's uh, absolutely gorgeous yeah 1993 release so it came good what six years after Maniac Mansion and uh, yeah graphics are absolutely stunning in this now, there's two versions because they did release like a floppy disk version and then they released a talky version on cd-rom which had full voice acting so if you're going to go and play it and hunt it down on on uh, whatever platform online 
I definitely recommend the talkie version. It also got remastered recently, so you can go down that route and play it on Steam or, or PS4 or whatever you want to play it on. But yeah, really good. Again, it's got that brilliant humour because it was created by um, Tim Schafer and Dave Grossman, and it was their first project together as team leaders. And uh, yeah, they worked on Monkey Island together, so they brought a lot of that really, really good dry humour over to Maniac Man. Uh, sorry, to Day of the Tentacle. Now, yeah, really, really good fun. Great puzzles. It's uh, got some great characters in it. The premise is you play uh, three characters, uh, Bernard and Hoagie and Laverne, his two friends, and they get sort of split into three different time zones. So Hoagie gets flung 200 years into the past and Laverne 200 years into the future, and then Bernard stays in the present. So as you switch between the three characters, you're switching between these sort of periods in history, and you have to solve puzzles based upon this. So the actions you kind of perform in the past and the present will affect the present and the future respectively and it makes the puzzles just absolutely brilliant it's such a good idea having this time travel element and it makes the puzzles just absolutely fantastic but yeah really funny really good sort of story and uh, and yeah like I said the the puzzles are really good so definitely check out Day of the Tentacle Next we have another real-time strategy game and again it is developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin much the same as Command and Conquer. Now this game is June 2 Battle for Arrakis. I think it got a different name in the US, it was something like June 2 Building of a Dynasty or something similar. But yeah, it's a real-time strategy. It follows the plot loosely of the film Dune. So you have the different households like uh, Harkonnen and Atreides and they're basically fighting each other for control of land and control of the planet and you have to harvest the spice so if you see in the film like you know what is it he says he who controls the spice controls whatever it is the world I can't remember the exact quote but but yeah you harvest spice and you encounter the spice worms or whatever they were called the, the, the giant worms and uh, yeah it's just great. It's, it's I think, even better than Command & Conquer. It came out three years prior to Command & Conquer, but it's kind of where the genre really started. Now, there were a couple, I think, at least one real-time strategy games that came out before this, but this is where it kind of came into its own, this genre. So, if you're a fan of real-time strategy games, definitely go back and look at this, because it's a real kind of slice of history of where that genre became like a real player in the market and it's really really good fun still it's just that classic real-time strategy gameplay so go and check out June 2 right going all the way back to 1990 for this next release and it's Pang and this was brought to DOS by Ocean now uh, Ocean one of the big players at the time on kind of Commodore 64 uh, and Amiga and, and DOS but yeah, did a fantastic job bringing this over. Now, Pang has been on all sorts of systems, but I first played it on the Amiga, and yeah, it's great fun on DOS. And uh, Pang is basically a game where you are a guy that has like a, what would you call it, like a grappling gun or like a harpoon, and you just fire it into the air and you hit bubbles, and the bubbles pop and they split in two. And when the bubbles get a certain size, like very small, they will then vanish. So the game of the game is to just destroy all the bubbles in the level without getting hit by them. Now it sounds very simple but it does get very very tricky. And this game is fantastic in co-op as well with two players. Really great fun. Uh, super addictive. You'll, you know, you'll die pretty quickly but you'll be straight back in there trying to get a little bit further or, or beat your high score. And yeah, Pang is just such a great franchise. I'd recommend you play it on any system but yeah, definitely go out and check out the DOS version. Right, and finally we have Speedball 2. Now this was released again in 1990. It was developed by Bitmap Brothers and published by Imageworks. Now Bitmap Brothers, another big player in the sort of late 80s, early 90s on the home computers. And they had such a distinct kind of graphical style. So when you looked at a Bitmap Brothers game back then, you just knew it was a Bitmap Brothers game straight away, even from the box art to the look of the gameplay, everything. So it has gorgeous graphics, really, really good fun. This did get a kind of updated re-release on PS3, on PSN, so you can download it on that if you wish. But yeah, definitely worth playing on DOS. And uh, it's a futuristic sports game, so you have 
uh, a kind of arena it's very futuristic like metallic arena and you have two teams you're controlling one of the teams and you're just throwing around a metal ball essentially into 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 uh, the goal at, at either end of the kind of little arena but yeah there are other ways to score points and it's kind of brutal you know you're constantly taking each other out very very simple it's kind of like a futuristic kind of American football game I guess but yeah it's just super fun especially with two of you if you're playing against the mate it's just really good competitive fun and definitely worth playing. So there we go guys, that was my 15 recommended DOS games. Go and check out the description where you should find some resources where you can go and play those games. And thanks for watching.